Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the top six mods that I've done on the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. So six mods that have made the biggest difference on this bike. We're hanging out in the garage today. We can't ride. We're in the middle of another lockdown, of course, here in the UK. So unfortunately, we're stuck here. However, it does give me a good opportunity to really think about some of those mods I've done over the summer, of which there have been many. But this video really just aims to refine that down into the things that I think have made the biggest difference. So in no particular order, let's start at number one, and that has to be the suspension. Suspension on this bike out of the box is okay. It's quite comfortable, it's quite plush, it's almost kind of luxurious, but I felt it to be a little bit wallowy, a little bit sloppy. Ever since upgrading the suspension to the YSS shocks on the rear and the YSS springs up front, the bike is just such a great road bike now. This was already a good bike. It was so smooth, it's so kind of light and flickable, just, just a really great bike, really wonderful frame. But I felt it was somewhat let down by the suspension. It was just, as I said, a little bit sloppy and a little bit wallowy. These shocks probably got them about 85, 90% dialed now, having done around a thousand miles on them. They're still a little bit harsh, so I'm just trying to get that balance between comfort and performance. It's nearly there, and I have to say, it just changes this bike completely. It's so dynamic now, it turns in so easy, it's comfortable, it holds the road beautifully. Just an amazing upgrade to get done. I would say in order of priority, if you're just gonna do one thing, I think the springs up front actually made the biggest difference. Even just the ability to adjust a bit of preload on those springs uh, definitely took away some of that kind of crashy feeling that it had before. So big difference there. And again, on the, uh, on the rear as well, just that feeling of performance now, the way it grips the road, it's just, a lot better and the bike feels a lot more dynamic as a result of that. The next thing I want to talk about are the mods that I did to the brakes. Now unfortunately I did two mods on top of each other so I can't really break this down. I changed the pads and the master cylinder both at the same time and ever since doing that the bike has a lot more stopping power and that almost certainly comes from the fact that we now have a sintered pad up front. But the feeling of control that you get from this Brembo RCS 15 is also a really big game changer as well. You've just got so much confidence now rolling into corners. It's got a lovely amount of travel, but also it's got a bite to it as well. The sintered pads, I think if you're just going to do one thing to the brakes, definitely go for those and make a tremendous difference to this bike. And my kind of attitude and approach to slower bikes like the Royal Enfield is if you want to make them go quicker, if you want to make them you know, perform better, it's not really about trying to upgrade the engine and things. It's much more about you know, changes to suspension, brakes, tires, all that kind of stuff. That really does make a big difference. And the fact that now with much more confidence, you can steam into corners just a little bit harder. It's got a much more positive bite to the brakes. It just makes a, a really big difference. So definitely loving the brake upgrades on this bike. And I would say if you're just going to do one thing, maybe the pads, if you want to go one step further like I did, that Brembo RCS 15. Mwah! beautiful upgrade as well. So the next mod I've got to talk about in my top six has got to be the pipes. Oh my gosh, these things just sound absolutely stunning. Let's just take a moment. The factory pipes actually do a really good job at keeping the bike quiet, but they are quite heavy and they're not much fun, let's be honest. Um, I've got the Scorpion Red Power pipes on this bike and they just, call it childish, call it whatever you want, but they just make the bike come alive to me. You know, motorcycling is, for me personally, all about that kind of sensory experience you get, you just don't get in a car, you know, being able to hear things and see things and smell things. It's about being connected to the outside and having an amazing soundtrack to complement that, I think makes a massive difference. Now these pipes are not massively loud, they're not obnoxious, and if you want to put the baffles in them, then they're not going to be a huge amount louder than the stock pipes, but it's just the tone. This bike has a wonderful 270 degree firing order in that parallel twin, and it sounds very kind of V-twin-esque, it has a wonderful burble to it. So doing this bike justice with a good set of pipes, I think is a definite, uh, mod that you should consider. So the next mod to talk about in my top six on the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 has got to be the fuel plug. And I'll combine that in with the DNA air filter as well. So modding the fueling on this bike, even just a small little change, I think makes a big difference. As we all know, these bikes come very lean out of the box thanks to all the Euro regulation. This just tricks 
the bike into adding about 6% more fuel into the mix. And as a result, it just helps with that initial throttle roll on. It makes it a little bit smoother. It helps the bike to run a little bit cooler. And it, it's debatable as to whether it really brings any more power in, but it does feel like it has a bit more pull in that initial throttle roll on. So um, I would definitely recommend that. But also the DNA air filter as well. A, it sounds good. B, it's easier to maintain. And C, again, slightly debatable, but you know, I, I think it does add to a little bit of pull in the initial acceleration as well. So definitely a good mod to think about, even if it's just from a kind of maintenance standpoint with that DNA air filter. But the fuel plug as well, if you're worried about the throttle being slightly snatchy or a little bit bitey, that's going to help to smooth things out just a, bit, a little bit. So the next mod to talk about is probably somewhat unorthodox on a bike like this, but I've added in that Domino fast action throttle and that just makes the bike feel a lot more snappy in that throttle roll on. As you know, with the factory setup, it's, it's kind of an integrated throttle tube into the factory switch gear. It felt a little bit sloppy and a little bit janky to me. So I wanted to do something about that anyway. Uh, but with this Domino system, you can change the cams. So you can change different throws on the throttle which ultimately gives you a lot more throttle with a lot less twist, if you know what I mean. So coming out of corners and things, you just give it a little squirt and suddenly you've got a boot full of throttle and the bike really takes off. Because the bike's not particularly powerful or fast, it just makes it feel a lot more responsive. It's not gonna be for everyone because it does make the bike feel a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more snatchy, a little bit more sensitive. But if you wanna, liven it up a little bit you can change those cams you can adjust all that stuff and get it how you want it to be that domino setup also comes with some wonderful throttle cables as well they're silky smooth and the whole thing's just really snappy really crisp and just makes a really big difference to how the bike responds so for my final mod on my list of six i'm going to cheat slightly and this is a combination of mods that in aggregate i think make up to a single mod and that is the control surfaces on this bike now on any bike i'm a big advocate for making sure that the way that you interact with the bike from an ergonomic standpoint is exactly how you want it to be so i can't really sit here and say well do this do that and do this and then you'll have the perfect bike but what i can say is the changes i've made to the control surfaces on the bike have made a massive difference for me personally nothing wrong with the stock bars i quite like them quite like the way it's set up quite like that kind of swept up comfortable upright position but on this bike i have put on the uh, lsl uh, naked bars i've also got the motone customs up and over risers and i've changed the levers as well so obviously on the brembo rcs 15 we've got a brembo lever but to match that i've got a twm clutch as well and these are all fully adjustable so i can get them exactly where i want them to be it just makes a world of difference. I love the, um, the Motone Customs up and over risers because it just gives me a little bit more latitude in my arms. So my arms are slightly more bent with the bars being close to me. So I've got more leverage, if you like, more space to bend my arms as opposed to being a bit more lent forwards. The LSLs, I've got a couple of different LSL bars with different rises that I've been experimenting with. Really love LSL stuff and uh, different grips as well. At the moment, it's got the domino grips on, which don't really suit the bike, but they do feel absolutely amazing. I've got some kind of chunkier big port grips I might put back on, but I've got to say, I'm, I'm really enjoying those, uh, those domino uh, grips, even though they don't look great. So yeah, getting the ergonomics of the bike from a control surfaces standpoint, just how you want it has also made a massive difference, not just to this bike, but to, to any bike. So there you have it. That's my list of six mods that I think have made the biggest difference to the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. And I have to say, hand on heart, having uh, done these mods and spent quite a bit of time out on the road on this bike, I've got to be honest and tell you that this bike is one of the best bikes I think I've ever ridden. It was a really awesome bike out of the box. You know, Royal Enfield gave us a very special engine, a wonderful frame designed by Harris Performance. And, you know, the rest of it kind of okay, built to a price point, absolutely good enough if that's what you want. But as a platform for customization and the platform to make it something that's personal to you, it is just a wonderful, wonderful platform to do that kind of stuff too. So the work that I've done on the bike for me has worked really well. I now have a machine that has the perfect power profile for the road. It's not too fast. It's not slow by any stretch of the imagination. It handles beautifully, it's sharp, uh, but it's got a bit of weight to it as well. So it's just got a really nice weight to it. It's, it's confidence inspiring, you know, with the suspension and with the brakes, you know, you feel like you can chuck it into corners. I do want to change the tires on this bike. That's definitely something that's gonna happen soon. So uh, we'll get something a little bit more grippy on there. But, um, you know, 
it, it just all feels like it's coming together really nicely. So if you're thinking about getting into this bike or if you've got the bike and thinking about doing some mods, this list is definitely where I would start thinking if I was you personally. I'm always happy to answer questions in the comments below, so get involved with that if, you've, if you want to know more. And until the next one, ride safe. <laughs>